Welcome back. Now, time for us to talk about how to boost your confidence and other structures where you need. Uh, we get a Kajad guest in the house. She is now certif certified in emotional intelligence, cognitive behavioral therapy, and family life system. Apart from that, she is now the founder of the Confident Woman Network. She is now um, coach and family life therapist, and she does the work with children and parents on waiting to improve their emotions management. Apart from that, help them communicate effectively, help them to understand what in value be, and even their relationship and overall structure. Join me, welcome. Chisa Bam Ofebu inside the house. Good to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Good to have me. you, Chisa Thank Bam. you for having me. Thank you. All right, Chisa Bam. Um, building, first, make I first start. How, um, we, from, from what we don't read, you don't need to do this thing for about over five years now. How did you take start? How did you start building uh, confidence in people? When I started building it myself, I realized that growing up, we, all, we, all, we have this whole understanding of um, confidence, how um, confidence is about what you have, if you speak well, if, you're, if you train well abroad, if you have a car, if you have a nice job, have all those things, and so you, you should feel confident when you have those things. And there was a point in my life where I had all those things, and I still wasn't confident. Mm. So I realized that if, self is, if you're not confident in self first, every other thing you know will not make sense. And so I was like, okay, let me start to look into myself, start to um, be confident in myself. What are the things that are keeping me from being confident? Because you find like, even if you're having the Gucci bag and you come into a place, you still feel oppressed, you still feel uncomfortable. And it's like, no, something is not working here. So I started to build myself, build my mind, started to go back to say, okay, what are these things that are making me scared to be with people? What are these things that make me easily angered? You know, so I started dealing with what we call timelines in emotional intelligence, my past experiences, everything, to a point where I'm now at a point where I'm pretty much at an equilibrium. Mm. You know, so I'm at peace. So even if I don't have the Gucci bag, if, if I have it and I don't have it, I'm still confident being in a place. So what do you mean this confidence what you just talk about? Okay, so confidence basically is knowing self and um, being able to boldly express this knowledge that you have. Now, I always put a caveat, M2, aside from boldly expressing it, you also have to tactfully express it. Because there's a lot of people who feel like they are confident, so they come into the place, they're aggressive, they're loud, they're the first to speak, and when they start speaking, nobody can talk after them. You know, that's, that's a no-no. Confidence should be warm, it should be kind, it should be tactful, where you don't even need to speak all the time because you know who you are, you don't need to prove it. You know, so every other person can have a, a go at the conversation and go at, you know, stuff. So for me, it's about knowing self and boldly and tactfully expressing that knowledge of self anywhere you are. I like that part where you talk, say you don't have to be very loud. My brother says mm -hmm. if you must announce your arrival, <laughs> then you haven't arrived. Mm -mm. Very true. All right, now, in, in, in the course of the five years where you don't work with confidence and build confidence in people, I don't know whether you get statistical records. Um, between the, you, do, you, do you work with only female? No, nah, no, now I don't, before I used to. Okay, now, now we don't work with men. As well, what's the difference? How, how you think, Siam? Um, do you think it's the women who have more confidence issues or the men? Uh, I feel like women. It might seem like the women have more confidence issues. But it, so in society, there are two things we confuse, we interchange. We confu con interchange confidence with competence. Mm. So statistics will say that women are more competent. We're the ones that chase degrees. We're the mm. ones that chase perfection in terms of career because we always feel like nobody's going to listen to us until we have everything. You know, so men, whether I like it or not, sort of entitled. Society has sort of, you know, allowed you guys just flow but and this, move. <laughs> but, but these days, so our girlfriends are getting entitled and we don't like it. No, <laughs> and you yes, don't like it. Introduce me to that girl who is feeling entitled. I want to learn from her. <laughs> Did you get, Did you get, but so women feel like they have to prove a lot. Mm. So when you feel like that pressure, it's hard for you to remain confident. Okay. So when they come, so there's, the, there's, a, um, there's a statistic that goes to say that in workplaces, women find it harder to approach the boss to say, I deserve a raise or I deserve a promotion, regardless of the fact that they are more qualified than the men. So in that, in that light, yes, women seem to be less confident than men. So where does low self-esteem come in here? Low self-esteem is also, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a root of um, um, low self-confidence. Low self-esteem is basically you don't even know who you are. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in yourself. And I, it always goes back down to, okay, so when people come to meet me to say, oh, Chizobam, I don't have confidence. I want to boldly, I don't know how to boldly express myself. I'm like, the problem you're having is not that you don't, you're not bold. I mean, you don't need anybody to show you how to use the toilet. 
you know, you just, you, it's, it's, it comes natural. So if you want to come, that's, I'm sorry, if you want to come, if you want to do something, you know, if you want something to come natural to you, you first of all need to know the thing you're trying to. So what is self? You don't know yourself. That's why you can't boldly express yourself because you can't boldly express an unknown. Okay. Now our, our, um, our director behind just been whispered something into my ears now. Uh, there's a thin line between being confident and getting arrogant. arrogant. That's, now, yeah. how do you know when you cross that line and what's the difference between confidence and arrogance? So you see, when I said, I, may, I, I put forward the definition, I said something about boldly expressing yourself and de tactfully. Mm. Do you understand? Um, arrogance is when you come into a room and, every, and you seem to be taking up the whole air. Mm. You're talking and everybody's trying to put in something and you're shutting them down. Do you understand? Yeah. Arrogance makes you feel like everybody is on that side and you're here. I used to be that kind of person. So, mm, I beg, I'm not, you know, let them stay there. And I would, you know, and I'll come into a room and I would talk and I'll be the loudest, not really the loudest, but I, I will make sure that my, you know, my opinions are the loudest. When everybody's trying to talk, I would shut them down and everything. And I felt that was confidence, because basically that's what it's preached to be. You know, but when you come into a room, confidence, I've seen people who've come into a room, they don't even need to say a word. You just know this person, like a monk. Mm -hmm. I always use them as examples. They come into a room, but you know these people know who they are. You can't, there's nothing you can tell them that will move them or shift them from the knowledge they have come to know and the peace that accompanies that knowledge. But when they come into the room, they make everybody feel good. Mm -hmm. Like supporters of Manchester United. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Why is Bernard in this room? <laughs> Why is he I'm just what? saying. <laughs> all right, all right, moving on. Now, we don't, say, <laughs> now, now we don't say you don't talk about, you know, building confidence in women and now you're going beyond women. Mm -hmm. Now let's come to the children mm -hmm. because now dear, everything they mm -hmm. start from. These are the, build, these, the building block stages mm -hmm. of life. Now, mm -hmm. building confidence in children, what ages <laughs> do you usually work with? I work with them from 11 to about 19. Mm -hmm. But um, the science will let you know that children start forming their personality from age two. So it's so, all. So is it easy? How do you? Is it possible? Say, if you build confidence in a child from age two. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, science will also tell you that children come, like when they come, it's easy. They are easily influenced. So based off of how they see their parents, that's why I also work with parents a lot because um, the the children. There's a quote that says, "Children will not do what you tell them to do. They will do what they see you doing." Mm -hmm. You know, so if your mom, if they have a mom who is constantly, you know, feeling insecure in the house, always scared around the dad, or a dad who is too, you know, this, or a mom who is too, they start to pick up like, okay, women are supposed to, you know, women are not supposed to express themselves fully, or the guy will go, oh, men are supposed to be, you know, so they, that thing starts to form. So either they got the wrong understanding of confidence, or they come out with low self-esteem. It always. So I always go back to the parents, how you, the family dynamics and the relationship dynamics tells a lot. The children are picking it up. But with teenagers, I always say something because there's a quote that there's something, there's a thing that go, that's going around that says confidence is, is earned. No, you're born with confidence. Mm. Like, and I want to go biblical. Um, I mean, you have the Godhead living on the inside of you. There's nobody more confident than that person, that Godhead. And so if you're on the inside of you, I don't understand how you would need, you were born without confidence. If you were born with it. Maybe there's a um, nature versus nurture argument where how you were born, the environment so influences and overrides it. Yeah. Simple. So probably it was overreading. So now I help you to find it. So teenagers, this is a self-expression age. Why we're having issues with teenagers? Because this age is a self-expression age. It's, every, it's an, a, an age to express, not even for them, but the whole century we're in. Everybody, that's why almost everybody wants to go into music. Everybody wants to, you know, do, do the arts. Do you understand? or loves comedy or something. We all just want to express ourselves and forget what we're going through. It's the same thing with teenagers. Okay. Do you understand? So <coughs> when I'm working with them, I take that into consideration and I tell their parents, you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot relate with a child if you do not know what the child is going through or the season in which the child is or the phase that the child is in. And so if you don't attack the, ch the phase properly, you break the child and you break their confidence. Okay, beautiful. Very quickly, I want to chip in something here. Now, we know say we're in this age where an era where uh, there's a new phenomenon where everybody, where they only grow on people, particularly women, and it's called feminism. Now, uh, you do something that say, I'm feminist. We are feminists, we are feminists, we are feminists. I'm actually glad now, you're asking this question. Mm -hmm. Of course. Now, here's the thing. Now, there are two different things. 
Um, a woman being confident is mm. one thing. A woman being feminist, don't know another thing. And now we know say with this society where we say um, the rhetoric has changed. Mm. Where we say no, be, it's no longer daddy goes to work, brings money, and mommy mm. is at home to cook. Now we get many women where they top industries right now, mm -hmm. right? And now then be breadwinners, mm. and then they put butter for the bread mm. self for their houses. <laughs> so now where do you move from being feminist, a woman being domineering and and controlling, mm. uh, to she just being confident for her home? When you say inside the home, meaning what? Not, not Please, just, can, not, we, no, can no, we take no, out just, inside just the, the home? home. Please, yes, now, yes. Now, I'm talking general, but we're starting, of course, like they say, uh, no, no, every no. society starts from the home. You know, family is the bedrock of society. So, well, from the home first and then to society. And, and here's why they also ask. Just about the weekend, I've been there with some of my friends, and they talk about female bosses mm -hmm. always trying to be domineering. Mm -hmm. Now, this one don't move from being confident mm -hmm. to being controlling. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this because earlier you've been talking, say, uh, women, they always get this confidence issue mm -hmm. when they try to go meet their boss mm -hmm. for office, you know? Mm -hmm. So now, turning it around, when the woman are the boss, mm -hmm. is it that she is trying to be confident or she they exact uh, uh, a controlling power on her staff? So where do you draw the line there? Okay, so number one, when women finally get into the position of mm -hmm. leadership, most times they always feel like they don't deserve to be in that place. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like you don't deserve to be in that place, you feel like everybody is also feeling the same way you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So you want to, instead of trying to be friends or be good, you feel like, oh, you know, I'm being attacked. And anybody that feels like they're being attacked or feels like they will have this whole domineering, overbearing mm -hmm. attitude. Mm -hmm. Now Simon Sinek says something. He says, fine, we want many women, a lot of women to come into leadership, but what we want the women, what we, why we want women is because we want the female part of women. We want the nurturing part. So we even want men, too, to also have female leadership, like have, exhibit female leadership, they themselves, female attributes in their leadership, not to be brash, not to be aggressive, but to be nurturing. So he says it's very disappointing when women finally come into leadership and they're acting like the men. Mm -hmm. Now I am not, I am, I, I always say this, and I, I don't know, it, it rubs off wrong on people, but this wave of feminism, which is extreme feminism, I am not a fan of it and I do not subscribe to it. Mm. Do you understand? Because I believe that women should first identify with the home. I do. I feel like that's, that's your first office. I'm seeing a lot of children who are suffering because women are not taking care of that office. No, especially for that, please. Okay, so um, it's not bad that you want to get a job. Feel free to get a job, but you must always make sure. I have friends who, I'm on this legal state um, government project, and I have a particular lady there who had to dial back her hours and take another, in fact, start her own business so she would control her time so she can be with her kids because she was noticing certain things. Like she's, <laughs> and the kids would keep saying, oh, mommy, won't you come back early? Please come back early. When kids tell you that, they're trying to pass a message on to you. Either someone at home is probably abusing them, but they can't verbalize it because maybe they've been threatened. So they'll just tell you. So you need to code well. What about in the cases where you cannot shift your time? You can leave that job and stay at home find, with your children. Find, find a business to start. I'm sorry, but it, I know. No, I get I you. Know, that, I know because I, <laughs> because I know a lot of. I work with them. I have an 11 year old who lined up in her class. She lined. She will line up boys and give them blue jobs. Wow. And then she sent a nude picture of herself to a boy, and he was passing the wrong class. Wow. And um, the teacher found out because they were all not focused any longer on the class. And then the parent, the father had, uh, had divorced the mom, so the mom was not at home. The male um, house help had started abusing her. Mm. Now, when they finally found that they scraped her hair, that's not the way to go about it. As in, it's scraping her hair, like so seriously? So the girl said, I'm going to show my father for what he did. So what did they And we had to bring the mom over, finally look for the mom and bring her, to sort of talk to the child, because she hadn't seen her mom in two years. I have children. <laughs> I, I tell people. <laughs> so you blame the woman for that? I don't. Bl no, no. The woman has no part to play in that. But she could have. Because she would have been home. She could. No, she could have. No, she could. I mean, she had no. She had no choice. You've been divorced. You've been sent yeah. out. Go home. You have to mm -hmm. go out. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But you could have as well kept. I'm trying to say the reason, the the, the danger of having little or no supervision Attention at home. On your children. Okay. Yeah. Because it's good that the village raises the kid, but it's the same village that damages the kid. And feminism will tell you that if a woman can actually shift her time working hours, mm -hmm. a man should shift his working hours too. And that's why I like Finland. Finland has this new rule, when a woman gives birth, it's not, the man is given paternity leave. And, so two of them stay at home. Mm -hmm. No problem. I have no problem. I, I feel like men should be more involved in parenting, but 
we can't fight a battle from two sides and win it. Yeah. So yeah. can we just fight it from one side, from the woman who gave birth to the child, first of all? Do you understand? Because I, <clears throat> I work, and I'm going to work when I give birth. But I, as in thank God, I know what I know now. Mm -hmm. Because my kids are my priority. That's why I had an issue. I have issues when people say you, it's, it's, it's somehow to identify first as a mom. What is your primary assignment? Now, seeing you now, I know you have so much passion about children. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a program coming up for kids very soon. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about them. Um, the Teen Confidence Building Bootcamp is for teenagers to teach them how to master their emotions because a lot of them are going through a lot of stuff at home and um, they don't know what to do with how they're feeling. So you see them doing drugs and all this stuff. And so it's also to teach them how to, since they are in love with social media and it's their age, teaching them how to handle themselves on social media the right way. You know, so looking at, at themselves as a brand, since this is your age and this, this is what you must do, we can't stop you. It's going to even get worse. So how about we teach you instead of trying to stop you? How about we teach you how to handle yourself? And use it. Who says you can't become a millionaire at your age using the social media? Who says you can't be an activist using be about something good? I totally like that. When is this taking place? Um, 28th, this Saturday. So if someone wants more information, where do they go for um, At the Confident Woman Network on Instagram. Okay, can reach me there. The, the Confident Woman, Woman Network. Network on Instagram. Okay. Um, just Instagram, any other social media handle, uh, any I'm, website? I'm very, uh, the website, we're working on that. Okay. Uh, there was something wrong, something went wrong with it, so we're working on it. But just one place so that... The Confident Woman, Woman Network. Network. Very easy for you to actually then locate. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank and she's of them. So very nice. And also, Bernard, really appreciate this. Oh, yes, I do. And I've seen that you're working with children. Are you married? No. She's oh, not. Okay. She's, she was I'm saying not that when I get too, married. All right, thank you very no, much. Not... Uh, and behind the building, too, we have so many married, uh, sorry, so many unmarried, unmarried people who are married here as well. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.